The Max 15 pushes the envelope, and so do I. Subscribe for more easy-to-understand educational laptop reviews like today's third-generation Max 15, the fastest lightweight 15-inch gaming laptop. This Max 15 stands out from the pack with its 3.8-pound magnesium alloy chassis, factory liquid metal on the CPU, G-Sync, advanced Optimus technology, and a muck switch. Inside is the 8-core i7-10870H, the RTX 2070 Super Max P, dual channel memory up to 3200MHz speeds, two M.2 slots for storage, Wi-Fi 6, and a 62-watt hour battery. One of my favorite enthusiast features of the Max 15 is its MUX switch. Within the BIOS, you'll have three graphics options. iGPU only will force the Intel graphics to run without access to the NVIDIA GPU for maximum battery life. Expect three to four hours with a personal best of five hours. Dedicated GPU only forces the RTX 2070 Super to run without access to Intel's integrated graphics for maximum performance. Here you'll be able to use G-Sync, a first in a long time for electronics, and it's particularly nice for low frame rate titles such as Flight Sim 2020. Just don't expect to achieve more than two hours unplugged, even web browsing. Dynamic mode is where we get to see some Max 15 magic. This is the default mode and utilizes advanced Optimus technology. It's likely where most Max 15 owners will remain. Advanced Optimus is explained in further detail within its own video, linked below, and at the end of this review video. But in short, Advanced Optimus uses a dynamic MUX switch that allows the user to have the convenient Optimus switchable graphics and G-Sync at the same time. Battery life here should also get you around three to three and a half hours with its 62 watt hour battery. But if you're editing video or gaming, expect shorter runtime. Having the MUX switch switchable in the BIOS also is a plus for those who wish to run Ubuntu. If you like what you see here but wish for a larger battery, then check out the Advanced Optimus Mech G3 with its 94 watt hour battery. Expect an additional 40% increase in unplugged runtime with that device. Additionally, performance modes make this stand out as an enthusiast product. Within the control center, you'll have four power modes, each with their own CPU and GPU wattage configurations shown on your left. This is something I worked with electronics on earlier this year, and it's nice to see these settings retained. This can be toggled within the software or at the press of a physical button located on the chassis next to the power button. You'll also have some unique fan control. Within office mode, you'll have some fan customization up to 70% maximum fan speed, for example. Gaming and beast modes pull higher wattage and the system will either scale its fan curve on its own or you can have these modes run maximum fan immediately. Both game and beast mode maximum fan option is tied together so you cannot separate maximum fan on beast mode and automatic fan on gaming mode for example. Should the user wish to have the power mode button act as a dedicated maximum fan button instead, this can be switched within the BIOS. Now you can set your favorite performance profile within the software then toggle maximum fans at the push of a button. I enjoy this additional approach. Combine the lower wattage office mode profile with maximum fans for maximum thermal performance. Either way, when you're done gaming, you can quickly get back to a quiet running laptop. To my knowledge, this level of customization is unmatched by any manufacturer or chassis out right now. To further add to this, the BIOS adds CPU undervolting up to an 80 millivolt undervolt, function key switching, and memory tweaking. Benchmarks. Take these over to Reddit and argue away while the rest of us play games. Yeah, I see you on there. It's also nice to see an Intel CPU that does not thermal throttle during CPU only benchmarks. Game time! Office mode with maximum fans is probably the most sensible option on a laptop this thin, featuring a 115 watt 2070 Super Max P. Here, temps typically run in the mid 70s with a maximum fan decibel of 50 dB. But there's something to be said about office mode with the automatic fan scaling. It seems to cap fan acoustics around 38 to 40 decibels with temps around 80 degrees Celsius on both CPU and GPU. Talk about fire and forget. Now if you're a honey badger and you don't give a shit, 
then gaming or beast mode is all yours. Maximum wattage will certainly push this thin laptop to its max. <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah, it's hot, but fast. It's here where you can really appreciate the choice Electronics has given to this laptop so the user who demands the fastest has it, and if you want a thermally tame solution, you're not having to apply one of my many thermal performance guides to your laptop to keep it from melting. While these are built to handle the heat, skin temperature on the keyboard at maximum load does pretty well over the WASD keys at under 40 degrees Celsius, goes over 50 degrees Celsius in the center and around 40 degrees Celsius on the palm rest. Still interested? Good. On to ports. On the left is the lock, USB 3, and a separate mic and headphone jack. On the rear is a Thunderbolt 3 that will connect to the NVIDIA GPU, an HDMI, local area network, and a barrel power port. On the right is a Ultra High Speed 1 micro SD card and two USB 3.0 ports. I'd love to see the card reader go full size, but if it was, then I'd ask for a speed increase. One hand opening is consistent and the silver magnesium alloy chassis does not smudge easily. The Microsoft Windows Precision trackpad is made of glass and can be disabled by double tapping the top left hand corner. The island style keyboard has four zone RGB and four brightness levels with above average color uniformity. The keys themselves are square, cramped, and shallow. This made room for a number pad but without an enter key, and it's shallow, no doubt due to the 0.77 inch thin chassis. Webcam is located at the bottom of the display, but it does feature Windows Hello via IR camera. Have a look and listen. All right, so here it is, webcam, microphone, nothing to brag about. Visually, microphone picks up decently. It will block out the ambient sound after one or two seconds, but it does muffle my voice quite a bit too. I do appreciate that it does attempt to isolate fan noise, especially at maximum speed, which is nice. Keyboard strokes sound like this, but obviously you can see the knuckles right there on the camera. We are doing this on battery, as I'm able to spin around in my chair and not get tangled up on cords. Obviously, not an ideal solution. It has a webcam. It has Windows Hello. Eh. The display is Full HD. It's an IPS type. LG owns the rights to call an IPS panel an IPS panel. 144 hertz G-Sync at 5 millisecond response. 100% standard RGB at 328 nits. Display options for Advanced, Optimus, and G-Sync combined are few and far between. Speaker audio features THX spatial audio. It's not going to knock your socks off, but it actually passed real-time audio testing. Have a listen. Flow like water, so I'm going mainstream. So the third generation Max 15 is very extreme, bringing a lot of technologies that I think a lot of people are going to appreciate and want, but make sure number one, and I do mean number one, if you are looking for this laptop, the number one reason why you should be interested in it is because it's under four pounds at the 15 inch form factor. Because if you're looking for something with improved thermal efficiency, but want all of these features, the Electronics Mech G3 is going to be your next best bet, and of course that does have a mechanical keyboard. I will have a link in the description below for a review of that, minus G-Sync and Advanced Optimus, so you can kind of get a feel for the hardware that's inside. Other than that, links in the description below for everything that I talked about in this review, as well as the hardware that we had featured today. This was a third generation Max 15 review. I'm Bob of All Trades, and I hope to see you in the next video.